I would say that making a selection of hair is the hardest thing that I am asking of you or we are asking of you in chapter 9. And so chapter 9 is kind of in a couple different phases. The first phase is to identify what a selection is and what a layer mask is. And again, we haven't talked about that yet. The second phase would be to create basic selections and basic layer masks like using the rectangular marquee tool or the lasso tool or, or even the magic wand tool and the quick selection tool. And the third phase is like the real phase. It's how do you actually use this and apply it and use it in such a way that you could create something. And to me, that is the refinement of the selection, right? I think anybody could kind of click around and make a selection. But to refine the selection and to do a good job doing it is kind of what sets good Photoshop users apart from kind of just generic mediocre ones. And so I'm going to go through this and I'm going to try to go as slow as possible. I know that sometimes I talk too fast, but that's the benefit of videos. You could just watch them over and over again until you, until you understand what I've been rambling about. Um, but I want to go as slow as possible because this is, it's very hard, but somebody who can select hair um, well can do a lot of things and they can, you know, if somebody gives you a picture and says, I want that person on the poster, you could take that picture person and you put it on the poster, but if you don't have the skill set to make it look nice, then your poster won't look nice because the image that you were given had a background in it that you didn't know how to remove. And so in order to do this, I want to always make sure that I'm practicing non-destructive editing. And so for me, for this project means I'm going to duplicate the layer. Close out of that guy. I'm going to go ahead and reset my workspace just in case I messed it up. And then I want to make a rough selection, and so you can make the selection with either the lasso tool or the quick selection tool, whatever floats your boat, I just want you to make a selection. And it's my hope that at this point in the lecture, that you've kind of taken your time and slowed down and made sure that you're comfortable with these, that I shouldn't even have to describe what I'm doing, I should just be able to tell you to make a rough selection of the lady. Um, I didn't get her hands over here, so I'll go a little bit bigger. Um, I don't really care if it has too much, but I'll try to make sure that I'm not getting too much of what I don't want. So I got too much over here. I don't want that. Let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I don't want all this over here, but I do want this part of the hair. And so I'll hold shift and I'll add to the selection. And then remember with the, let's zoom out here, with the quick selection tool, um, I recommend kind of doing smaller chunks at, uh, at a time. And so I'm not going to hold shift and drag and try to get all the hair but maybe I will just kind of get a little bit at a time. And so that way if you mess up and you do have to hit undo, um, you don't have to undo a lot. So we'll go across. You know what? I don't know that when I was doing this if I was paying attention to the glasses when I was doing the demo. So we'll see. I'm not worried about the wispies. I can add them back in in the select a mask dialog box. But I do want to make sure I have you know a decent chunk of her hair because when you go in that dialog box, you're immediately going to see um, part of the hair and you're not going to see other parts of the hair. And so you can go around. This should be good enough. It's just a rough selection. So once you've made a rough selection, now you can go to the Select a Mask dialog box. It's on your uh, option bar at the top of the screen. You can choose Select a Mask. It kind of basically takes over your whole screen and you lose access to your other panels and your tools because you're supposed to modify in here and get everything that, the way that you want it to be and then you can uh, hit OK and go back to your real document. And so um, inside here I'm just going to move this closer. I don't know why but it always makes me feel more comfortable when my panel is closer to what I'm doing. And then I'm going to grab these tools over here so that if I zoom in you can still see the tools. And so this is my new tools panel and it only has tools that I'd be able to use inside the Select and Mask dialog box. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of these tools first. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this happen inside the properties panel over here. And then when I can't make it work, then I'm going to kind of go back over to these tools on the left hand side. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to see what I'm selecting. And right now I just see the image. And so I'm going to change my view to on white, which is what I like. Or you could do it on layers. And so you can see. Um, so I duplicated my layer, so it's not working in this instance, but you would see like the background layer, the layer beneath it. And so we'll do on white, because I can clearly see that I have these weird harsh edges, and I'll be trying to get rid of those weird harsh edges. Okay. Um, under edge detection, you can increase the radius and just kind of slowly increase it and kind of see what happens when you increase it. 
sometimes I get to kind of like blow it out and say, well, what's really happening here? And so if I blow it all the way out to 250 pixels, it's trying to kind of move in on my selection and kind of figure out where I should have selected as opposed to where I actually did select. And so you can kind of mess around with that. I would err on the side, just do a little bit at a time. I like the smart radius. I think that it really helps. And so when you choose smart radius, you'll get kind of different results. So you get more wispy hair in this case because it's recognizing that it's hair. You can smooth your selection. I like to feather the selection a little bit. It feathers the edge. You can see if I do it too much, it feathers the whole edge. But you can kind of just feather just a little bit and kind of smooth the edge of the picture out. Under the output settings, I like to decontaminate the color, which will help to remove the background. But it didn't work, right? It's still kind of funky. It's not what I want. If I look at these edges down here, her shirt and her hand, I'm happy with that. Um, Using the edge detection and the feathering, it worked on those areas, but her hair, her hair is just not working right now. And so now we can go to the brushes that you'll find on the left side of your screen. And you can see the first one, if I hover here, is the quick selection tool. And so I can use this just like I would use it outside the dialog box. And so what I could do is I could hit option to remove, and I could come in here and I could try to manually remove the, um, the hair. I could come over here, because our hair ends right here, but I still have some background. And so you could kind of try to get the background out, but it's not working so well because it's a quick selection. It's trying to select more than what you're telling it to. The second is the Refine Edge Brush Tool, and this works really well for the wispy hair over on the right-hand side. And so I'm going to make my brush bigger. And if you just paint kind of over the edge, like right here, you'll see that as you do that, it kind of went through the hair, and it tried to remove the background color, so now it looks more blonde. You can also do that by painting over like the wispy part of the hair. And so let's do this. So I can come up here to where I have the wispy flyaways and I can paint upward onto them and I can try to paint them back into the picture. I can paint over this area that has the green background. You can see that very quickly it kind of let the flyaways. Now it will be your determination on whether you want to see the flyaways or not but it looks more realistic when it has the flyaways. And so, did you see that? Um, the, there's a light behind her and it was showing through in the picture and when I painted over it, it didn't entirely go away, but it figured out I didn't want it and it found a way to kind of make it less subtle and it just made it blonde as if it was hair. And so you can kind of come on the edge of your picture and move around down along the edge here until you get rid of those background colors. Sometimes, like in my previous example, you end up um, getting rid of some of the shirt and that kind of thing. Or over here on the right hand side, I got rid of some of her hair. And so you can use the third tool, which is the brush tool, and you can paint back in. And so what's different about using the brush tool and the quick selection tool is the quick selection tool is going to try to say, well, I, you selected that area, but you really meant you wanted more than that area. And so now I can kind of like slowly paint her hair back in. Let's zoom out here. And so you can like modify what you're painting and you can kind of paint back in just the part that you wanted to see on the edge of her hair. And you can kind of go around and modify that because you have feathered on the dialog box, it's gonna feather. Um, I'm going to zoom in because I got too much. See how I have background? You can always hit the option key to erase. And so you can kind of come through. And this has somewhat of a, of a harsh edge on it. And so I'm just trying to paint smoothly on here until, oops, until I get what I want. If my brush is too big, it's going to keep doing what it's doing. So you can always use the right and left brackets to kind of smooth that out. Um, you can always, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to try to paint, so shift, paint back in. Oops. I'm going to paint back in, and maybe it'll be easier to paint that edge back in. And so you just want to go around the image and make sure that the part that you want is selected. Maybe I don't want this part here, and so I'll hit Option and I'll paint over it. It's in the background. It's just, it's just bright because it's a light. You can come over the top of this part of the image where the sunglasses is. If you're trying to see if it's starting to be transparent, you can paint over it and you'll kind of paint it back into the image. And so if you come around to the side and you realize that you kind of messed up her hair over here, you can kind of paint that back in. Maybe you get more than you want, but then you can go back and you can use that edge detection brush and kind of fix the wispies there. You want to be careful though because I've over-processed the top of her hair. The more you do it, the more blurry it's going to look. 
and so you want to you want to try to not do it as much and so we'll undo and I'll just leave it the way that it was there we go okay so now if you are are happy with the selection that you made and I would say I'm okay with the one I made for now for the demo um, you can you can select okay and you can say I need to go back to my document but you need to decide how you're going to view that and so I'm going to choose to create a new layer with the layer mask I want a layer mask and you can see that I now have a new layer it has a layer mask just like the slideshow did the white area is what I got to keep and the black area is what disappears but you're probably thinking to yourself well I still see the background well that's because I have multiple layers I duplicated the background so I didn't accidentally edit it and so it's still turned on if I turn it off you'll see that I did get rid of the background on this image and now I could make modifications like I did in the slideshow so I can add a new layer and put it beneath that layer and I could command A to select all so I have everything selected on the empty layer and you can choose edit fill you can fill it with a color and so maybe I want a pinky color like in the example you can fill the color that way zoom out a little bit you can I can you see right here I got too much you could always go back to that layer and you can you can get rid of that I'll show you that in a second you could also do an adjustment layer so you don't have to fill the layer you could use the layer adjustments and you could do let's say a gradient and so then you can choose the gradient that gets applied. You can choose whether it's radial or linear. And then you can kind of drag and drop and rescale it until you get the look that you're going for. That's maybe too big. And maybe that's what I was trying to do for her. Maybe I don't like the, the pink anymore, so I'll just refill that layer with a different color. Maybe I like a darker pink. And maybe that's something that I like now. Let's talk about one last thing before I turn the video off. And so I just kind of did a quick one for the video. and You can kind of see that I have some wispies out here that I probably didn't want. Um, it's been applied to a layer mask. And we're going to learn about layer masks in the very next video. So although I've been saying it, I promise it's coming. Um, when you have a layer mask, the white part of the layer mask is what you get to keep. And the black part is what disappears. And so if I select this layer and I try to paint with black on it, I would be painting on, whoops, make sure you actually have a brush selected when you do that. So I grab the paint brush from the tools panel. If I paint, I'm on the layer right now, I have the actual layer selected, I would just be painting black, right? And so that's not what I want to do. But if you select the layer mask, the thing hanging out on the right hand side, and both the gradient fill and the background copy have a layer mask. The black area disappears and it, it goes away. You can always get back to it, which is the benefit of the layer mask, but it's what disappears. And so if I take a paintbrush and I take black and I want to get rid of this like flyaway right here, you can paint on it on the layer mask and it will make that part of the image disappear. You could even, if you come up here to your options bar, you have a paintbrush selected, so then you can choose settings for your paintbrush. I have the hardness set to zero, so it has a feathered edge to it. And so as I paint, I won't be applying a hard edge. I won't get a straight line. I'll get kind of a feathered edge. You can also change the opacity, right? And so maybe I'm not loving this part of her hair. Maybe I just want it to kind of fade backwards. If I lower the opacity to like 26, let's say, and I'm on that layer mask, and now I start to paint over the top of that, Every brush stroke is only putting 20% opacity, so I'd have to brush it four times for it to disappear. But you kind of go over the top of some of these areas that you don't want to see as much, and you can kind of fade them out by brushing on the layer mask. So I'm brushing with black to make it disappear. And you kind of make them fade, or you can kind of manually fade the edge of your hair so it kind of falls backwards into the image. I'd like you to try this with two or three images because every image of hair is different and it's going to be frustrating the first couple times you do it. You will be required to do this for your project for Module 3 and on the exam. And so practice, practice, practice before you take the exam because there is a question that will specifically ask you to remove the background in, of an image um, of a lady that has hair and she's got really hard hair to select. So make sure you practice, practice, practice making selections with hair.